Quadratic equations are so important that we have three forms of equation that we can look at them in. We have the standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is cool because at a glance, you know that the y-intercept is this value right here. Now another form we have is turning point form. Now we love turning point form because we can look at these two values and know straight away that the turning point is equal to hk. Now finally we have factored form. And factored form is awesome because it tells us what the x-intercepts are just by looking at this value here and this value here. It's really worth admiring this. We have three different forms of the same equation. This one tells us the y-intercept, this one tells us the turning point, and this one tells us the x-intercepts. All together, we know all the information that's really interesting when it comes to a quadratic. Now importantly, you can move between these fairly easily. So if you want to go from this form to turning point form, from standard form to turning point form, you complete the square. If you want to go from turning point form to standard form, you just expand the brackets. This also is true if you want to go from factored form to standard form as well. If you want to go from standard form to factored form, it's pretty obvious that you should factorize. So factorize using decomposition or the AC method, whatever it is that you call that kind of thing. So what if you want to get from factored form to turning point form? You take the scenic route. If you want to go from factored form to turning point form, you go expand into standard form and complete the square. If you want to go from turning point form to factored form, you go expand and then factorize. Uh, it's a little bit of a journey. So you could get asked to sketch a quadratic in any of these forms. I've got one here in standard form that I want to sketch. Now, no matter what form you're in, you still want to show some key points. So we should be showing the x and y intercepts, the turning point, and the axis of symmetry. So looking at this quadratic here, we can see straight away one of these things. The y-intercept is going to be negative 3. Now if I want to find my axis of symmetry, my AOS, that's going to be equal to negative B over 2A, A, B, C. Now in this case, negative B is negative negative 2, so that's going to be positive 2 over 2 times 1. Alright, 2 over 2 is 1. My axis of symmetry here is going to be 1. So that gets me closer to finding the turning point because the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the turning point. So if I sub 1 in for x, I'll know the y-coordinate of the turning point. And what I get here when I sub 1 into my quadratic for x is 1 minus 2 minus 3, which is minus 4. Okay, uh, so that means that my turning point is going to be 1, negative 4. I'm going to have a turning point right there. Now you need to stop and you need to ask yourself, does this make sense? I've got an axis of symmetry here, I've got a y-intercept there, I've got a turning point below it. Now looking at my quadratic, my a value is positive, which means that it's going to be this shape, a smiley-faced quadratic. So that makes sense, it's going to swoop down from here, it's going to turn there and it's going to come back up. I need to find my x-intercepts now, and I can use my quadratic formula to do that. Now don't forget, this is our quadratic formula. You've seen that before. You should come and talk to me about it because it's really interesting. Um, now, we use it if we're trying to solve a quadratic of the form 0 equals the quadratic. So the quadratic here is x squared minus 2x minus 3. And then we're solving that. So let's sub in negative 2 for b, 1 for a and negative 3 for c. So x is going to be equal to all of this. Now you need to be really careful here. Negative negative 2 is positive 2 plus or minus the square root. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2 which is positive 4 and negative 4 times 1 times negative 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. So this whole bit here is positive 12 all over 2. Alright, I can see that that's going to be 16 and I know that the square root of 16 is 4. So I have 2 plus or minus 4, all of this, all of this became 4, divided by 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, divided by 2 is 3, or 2 minus 4 is negative 2, divided by 2 is negative 1. They are my two answers. Let's see if it makes a bit of sense. Negative 1 here, positive 3, 2, 3, here. 
this sort of checks out. Now, my sketch is not going to be great because I've kind of um, stretched myself out a little bit. In hindsight, I wish I'd pushed this out further. And if I was sketching this again, I would push that out further. So my quadratic would have a nice shape. Your X and Y axes don't have to be the same scale. But I reckon I've made the best of a bad situation here. Label up any points that you need to label up. I'll label this one here as uh, 1, negative 4. And I'll make sure that we know that this point here is 3. Doesn't make sense for the 3 to be there. I reckon that's a pretty good sketch. I've got my axis of symmetry there as well. I can say that the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals 1 if I, if I want to. Uh, but that's a good way to sketch something in that form. Now, I could spend time showing you how to sketch something from turning point form. I could spend time sketching something from factored form. But really, the truth is that you're just looking for this information. So, if you're given something in factored form, pull the x-intercepts from factored form. And then you can just expand it, put it into standard form, and find the other stuff you want to know. If you've got something in turning point form, then find the turning point. And then you can just expand it and treat it as standard form and do everything that I just did. There are other small little shortcuts here and there when you're sketching these, but you can't really go too far wrong as long as you understand that you're looking for these things and then you find them. Now, if you were given a quadratic with some specific information, you could determine the equation of that quadratic. And which one of these equations you work towards really depends on what information you're being given. If you were given the turning point and some other random point, then it would make sense to start working towards the turning point form. Because you can easily put the turning point in for h and k, sub this value in for y and x, and once you've subbed in y, x, h and k, you can easily find a. If you know what a is, you know the whole equation. In the case where you were told the x-intercepts and some other random point, it would make sense to use factored form because you could sub this value into here, this value into here, and you could sub the x and y coordinates of this point in to here, here for the x's, and here for the y. Once you've got numbers here, 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 and here, you can figure out what a is. And if you know what a is, you know what the equation is. And finally, you really don't want this to happen. But if you're given three random points, your only real option here is to use standard form. Now, the reason I say you don't want it to happen is because if you're in this case, what you're going to have to do is write this equation three times. Sub in this point for y and x here. Sub in this point for y and x into the next equation. And sub in this point for y and x into the next equation. And then you're going to have three equations with three unknowns, a, b, and c. And then you need to solve those three equations simultaneously. Very difficult to do by hand, but if you have a calculator, you can type it into your calculator, type the three equations in and get a solution that way. Now I'm going to leave this one alone and come back to here. If I had this, this specific turning point and this specific value, I can sub in my turning point, making sure that that negative 2 becomes positive 2 here, and then sub in this value. Now once I've done that, you can see I have this a value hanging out there all by itself. Everything else is numbers. All I need to do is start working towards solving that a value. Now when I do that, I find that a is equal to negative 4 on 25, and therefore the equation of the quadratic is negative 4 on 25 bracket x minus plus 2 squared plus 3. All right, so there's a basic idea of how to do it if you know the turning point and the random point. With the second one, if I knew these two roots were negative 3 and 5, I could sub them in to here and here. Now, making sure that I swap the signs. Given I've also got this random point over here, x equals 4, y equals 2, I can sub those into there and there. Now, people get confused here. You're subbing in x twice, 4 plus 3 and 4 minus 5. And then we just work towards solving this. Now that's 7, so we have a times 7. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, so 2. And then 2, this is negative 7. We divide by negative 7, and that's what our a value is. 
Now that we know our a value, we know the full equation. We know that the equation is y equals 2 over negative 7, that's our a value, bracket x plus 3, x minus 5. Now, of course, if you've got a graphical calculator, you can type that in, and you should get something that looks like that. Now, you really can choose to stop watching here, but I am going to jump through this one very fast. So I've got three random points, no turning points, no y-intercepts, no x-intercepts. My only hope here is to put this point into this equation, this point into that equation again, and that point into that equation for y and x, and then I've got three equations. So I've put negative 2 and negative 4 in for y and for x. Now you can neaten this up a little bit by squaring that and just putting the numbers before the letters. It's just neater that way. And that's our first equation here. We're going to need two more of those. Now there's our second equation. And of course we sub this point in for a third equation. And now that we have one, two, three equations, we can solve them using our simultaneous equation solver on our calculator. Now when I've got those a, b, and c values, I'm really finished here. I can now say that y is equal to negative 0.25x squared plus 0.4x plus 3.66. Now, there is some rounding involved there. There's more digits of that a value and more digits of that b value and more digits of that c value. So if you were to sub in one of these points back into y and x, you'd get very close, but you wouldn't get the answer because there's some inaccuracy that's come in here with the rounding. Whoa, those are the three forms of the quadratic equation. We've gone further than we should have, but it was pretty neat. I like it.